Hey guys, thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to be going over the week seven concepts for Physics 111. So starting off with work, uh, it's actually easier to explain what work is by looking directly at our equation here. Um, basically, we can define work as our displacement times the component of our force, which is parallel to that displacement. So we see that work is equal to force times cosine theta times delta x. And this is going to give us units of Newton meters or joules. And in the example below, uh, in this image, we can see that uh, we have a box which is being moved in the rightward direction. Uh, and basically, our force here uh, is not directly parallel to our motion. Uh, so in order to find our work, we're going to want to find the component of that force which is parallel to the motion. And to do this, we're going to take the cosine of the angle relative uh, to our motion and multiply that by our force. And this is going to give us the component of our force which is parallel to motion and we're going to multiply this by um, our actual displacement and this will give us our work. So a couple observations we can make is that if there is no motion no work is done. So basically if we think about this work is equal to our force times our cosine theta times our um, displacement and in this case uh, since there is no motion uh, our displacement is going to be equal to zero, so this would make our work equal to zero. And then we also see that if the force is perpendicular to the displacement, no work is done. Uh, so just to think of this conceptually, uh, we know that uh, work is going to be the component of our force parallel to the motion uh, times our displacement. So if we have a force which is directly perpendicular to our motion, there isn't going to be a component of this force uh, that's parallel. So therefore, uh, conceptually thinking, we already know that our work is going to be equal to zero. But then uh, if we want to do this uh, using the equation, we take our force, our cosine, and then for our angle, if we have something perpendicular, we're going to plug in 90 degrees, and then we would multiply by our displacement. Uh, but this actually gives us an answer of zero. So it would mean our work is also equal to zero. Uh, and then we can also see that if our force is completely parallel to the displacement, then work is equal to force times displacement. Uh, this is basically uh, the exact opposite of what we just talked about. So basically in this case, we have um, a component of force that's directly parallel to motion. Uh, so this is what we want by our definition. So therefore we don't need to um, look for a different component of this force because our force already is parallel. So when we plug in work is equal to force times cosine, here we would plug in a cosine of zero degrees times delta x. And this would be, give us an answer of one. So basically it's just easier um, to remember that when we have parallel forces to our um, displacement, uh, we can use this simpler equation. And then lastly, it's also important to realize that work can in fact be negative. And in these cases, uh, the forces are going to be acting against the motion. Um, so these are going to be angles between 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Uh, and if we were to plug an angle between 90 and 270 uh, into our cosine equation, it would give us a negative answer. And whenever we get a negative work, we just have to remember uh, that our forces are acting in the opposite direction. Uh, as our motion. Alright, next we're going to be going through an example. The example says a student pulls a 50 kilogram box 7 meters across the floor with a 230 newton force applied at 25 degrees above horizontal. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.3 between the floor and the box. What is the work done by the student? What is the net work? And is the box accelerating? Uh, so to start off we're going to want to draw our free body diagram uh, and we have our box here. We know there's going to be a force of gravity and a normal force. We also see uh, that the problem says uh, we're moving the box with a 230 newton force applied at 25 degrees above horizontal. So we're going to have a pulling force um, that's 25 degrees above our horizontal. So we know that this angle here is 25 degrees and we know that our force is equal to 230 newtons. And then lastly, we're told uh, that we have a co coefficient of kinetic friction, uh, so therefore we know 
that there's also going to be a friction force acting on this box. Uh, so now that we have um, all our forces on the box, uh, let's look at the first question. It says, what is the work done by the student? Uh, so in order to find this, uh, it's actually really simple because we have a lot of things given to us in our problem. Um, so let's write it out. We have our work of our student is going to be equal to our force times the cosine of theta times our delta x. So in this case, um, we're already given our force um, as 230 newtons. We're actually given our angle already uh, to be 25 degrees and we're given our delta x um, as 7 meters. Uh, so therefore we know our force, or our work, sorry, is going to be equal to um, 1459 joules. Um, so that was the work of the student. Uh, next we're asked for the net work. So here we have to consider basically um, all of our forces which have uh, horizontal components because in this case our motion is horizontal and we know uh, that our work is going to be equal to our displacement times the components of force which are um, parallel to that motion. So um, to start off, uh, we're going to want to find um, basically uh, our net force. And in order to um, get our net force in the horizontal direction, we're going to take our uh, horizontal component of our pulling force and we're going to have to subtract our uh, friction force because our friction force is also in the horizontal uh, direction. So let's start off by finding our friction force. Um, we know that the equation to find friction force uh, is our coefficient of kinetic friction times our normal force. Uh, so let's start off by finding our actual normal force. And normally our normal force would be equal to um, the opposite magnitude of our um, force of gravity. But in this case, if we look at our image, we see that we actually have a pulling force uh, which is not um, completely parallel uh, to our motion um, or perpendicular to gravity. Therefore, we know that our pulling force is actually going to uh, change our normal force a little bit. So if we think about it, if we're pulling the box um, at this 25 degree angle above uh, our horizontal, we're actually pulling the box off the ground a little bit. So this is going to actually decrease our normal force. So in this case, our normal force wouldn't just be equal to our mass times gravity, um, or in other words, our force of gravity, but we would actually have to also um, subtract the um, component uh, of our pulling force, which is in the ver vertical direction. So we're going to take the sine uh, of our angle and multiply by our pulling force, and this is going to give us our normal force when we subtract this from our force of gravity. Um, so when we plug our numbers in here, we get our mass is 50 kilograms. We know that gravity um, has an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. And we're going to subtract um, the sine of 25, because that's our angle relative to uh, the horizontal times our pulling force of 230 newtons. And this is going to give us an answer of 393 newtons. So now we have our normal force. And then to get our force of friction, uh, like we said before, we're going to take our um, kinetic coefficient, which was 0 0.3, and multiply by this normal force, which was um, 393 newtons and that'll give us an answer of 118 newtons. So now we have our force of friction so but our question is asking us for the net work so we're going to want to find our net force in the horizontal direction. Um, so to get this our net force is going to be equal to um, the horizontal component of our pulling force so we're going to multiply our pulling force times cosine theta minus our friction force. So it's going to be equal to 230 newtons times the cosine of 25 degrees minus um, our friction force, which we got as 118 newtons. And this is going to give us a net force of 90.5 newtons.
and then therefore our network would be equal to 90.5 newtons times cosine of zero degrees and I'm going to explain that in a little bit uh, times our displacement. So basically the reason why we're using zero degrees here is because when we found our net force we actually found the net force in the horizontal direction uh, because we took the horizontal component of our pulling force and we took our force of friction so basically everything is in the horizontal direction now uh, so we already have all our forces uh, parallel to our motion. So here we don't uh, really need to use cosine. Uh, so we're just going to plug in zero because our motion is already, uh, our forces are already parallel to the motion. Uh, and this is going to give us an answer of 634 joules. So now um, we found the work done by the student. We found the network. Uh, and lastly, we're asked whether the box is accelerating. Uh, and this is actually a really easy question. We already uh, basically answered the question. When we found our net force, we found that our net force was equal to 90.5 newtons. Uh, and basically, anytime we have a net force that's not equal to zero, we know that by definition, uh, we have to have an acceleration because net force is equal to our mass times our acceleration. Uh, so therefore, a non-zero net force means we do have an acceleration. All right, next we're going to be talking about the work energy theorem. And we have to remember that work is the transfer of mechanical energy. So therefore, our net work can be set equal to our change in kinetic energy. So we're going to go back to the example we saw earlier. And uh, we're going to use this work energy theorem in order to um, basically find uh, a velocity. So our question now says, if the box starts from rest, what is its final speed at the end of 7 meters? Um, so here, we have to remember, uh, we already solved for our network earlier, uh, and we got an answer of 634 joules. Uh, and basically, here we're asked for final speed, so we're looking for our velocity here. Uh, and we're going to use this equation, uh, our work energy theorem, in order to find this velocity. Uh, so we're going to plug in our network, and we're going to set it equal to our change in kinetic energy. So one half of our mass, which was 50 kilograms, times our velocity squared minus one half of our mass times our initial velocity uh, squared. And we see in this problem, uh, it says that we're starting from rest. So our initial velocity is going to be zero meters per second. So basically, we can ignore this half of the equation. And when we solve for v, we're going to get a velocity of about 3.8 meters per second. All right, lastly, we'll be talking about the differences between conservative and non-conservative forces. So with conservative forces, we see that work does not depend upon the path taken. So for instance, the force of gravity or spring forces. And we see that mechanical energy is always going to be conserved. And with non-conservative forces, our work does depend on the path taken. So for instance, friction forces. And mechanical energy is always going to be added or removed from the system. So with potential energy, we're always going to be concerned with conservative forces. And the change in potential energy is the work done against a conservative force. So therefore, our gravitational potential energy is going to be the work done against the gravitational force, so lifting an object. So our delta PE, um, or our change in potential energy of gravity, is going to be equal to our mass times our gravity times delta H, and delta H is going to be the height um, of our displacement. Uh, so basically, instead of delta X, we call it delta H because we're dealing with gravity here, which is going to be strictly vertical. And we see that this is independent of the path taken and it's only concerned with the difference in height achieved. So in the image on the right, we can see that two separate people are carrying the same TV up to the same height. Uh, and basically, even though the man carrying the TV up the stairs is going to travel a further distance uh, than the woman using the pulley, uh, in both cases we have the same TV, so the same mass, we're going to have the same force of gravity, and we're going to travel the same displacement, we're going to have the same delta H, so therefore, we have to realize uh, that even though um, one person traveled considerably further uh, as far as distance, um, since we have the same displacement, 
our potential energy is going to be the same in both cases. And then lastly, just to talk about uh, springs quickly, we see here that the force of a spring depends on its position and spring constant. And we see that the um, spring force equation below, and we also see our elastic potential energy equation um, for springs, which we're going to be using a lot as well. Um, that's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.